Welcome back to the Business Insider. So our topic tonight is the United Nations World Tourism Organization's uh, 48th Middle East Commission Conference due to be held here in Cairo on the 28th of March. My guest tonight is Mr. Ala Khadifa. He is the marketing expert of international tourism and expert on digital transformation in the tourism industry. Once again, a pleasure having you on the show here tonight. Thank you so much. All right, let's tonight. start with the mandate of the World Tourism Organization. When, when one says WTO, mm -hmm. usually he thinks of the you World Trade WTO. Organization. So, yes. so the World Tourism Organization's <clears throat> mandate. Yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's an organization that's part of the UN. It's, it comes under its economical wing and uh, the UN WTO um, has been uh, comprising um, member states of 150 member states uh, mm -hmm. uh, worldwide and six uh, organization as affiliates, uh, international organizations and about 500 uh, um, of six associations and about 500 affiliated member in the World uh, Tourism Organization. So 150 countries. Normally these countries have the membership in the World or um, Tourism Organization because um, the, the organization bring out uh, all the uh, current statistics and reporting from these countries about the status of tourism in these countries. Mm. And that's, that's mainly how the, the World Tourism Organization bring countries together. And they have six um, commissions. These are called regional commissions. And one represent Africa, another one represent uh, Southeast Asia, another one for uh, South Pacific, and another one for the Americas and Europe and the Middle East, mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where we are having the, the 48th right. um, meeting. That's where Egypt have uh, been sharing the um, commission. Um, the commission is called the CME and have been sharing the commission uh, since 2021 up to 2023. Right. So we have uh, two years uh, sharing the commission and a vice chair for the commission. I think it's Iraq and Lebanon. They're taking the, uh, uh, the vice chair of this commission. We are hosting this meeting, regional meeting, the 48th. The 47 have been hosted in Saudi Arabia and Riyadh. Riyadh. And uh, now we are having the pleasure and the honor to host the 48th uh, meeting this time in Cairo. We Very good. So you, you talked about the World Tourism Organization's mandate, which is basically reporting. Uh, basically bringing member states together and bringing the right reporting from these member states about the status of tourism and travel into these uh, uh, member countries. So it basically and dissects the situation, the tourism this situation. Is why they, this is why they are actually having these six commissions. And the six commissions, their mandate is to bring these countries together to communicate together and exchange experiences and exchange um, um, and participate in conferences where they are uh, having their input uh, and, and dealing with current uh, situations. Like for example, when we have a, a special uh, panatomic or something that have halted the tourism industry for a while, then th th that becomes the hot topic in one regional area. Sometimes um, c commissions are discussing different topics that are related to a specific geographical area. Um, a commission in Europe is discussing a different uh, topic. Commission in the Middle East is discussing a topic about sustainability and about um, um, as, as you have seen, as it has been mentioned in the report, and, and uh, discussing also the future of tourism, uh, discussing uh, um, various other topics that could be out of interest to uh, uh, countries in the Middle East. Um, these commissions, the, they, they came out as uh, regional branches from the World Tourism Organization in order to bring countries together so they can meet together. Um, um, the division of that came out in 1975, which is an, a long time ago, and ever since that time they have to convene every single year. So these commissions, they convene in a, in a member state or a member country every year um, where they are going to, like in this, this time in Egypt, they're going to decide who's going to be uh, the host for the next uh, year. Right. So. I was going to ask you about the, the mandate of the Middle East Commission, but you, you, you mentioned that. Basically, what is occupying the, um, 
the interest, the attention of the six commissions is the pandemic and now the situation of the war happening in uh, Ukraine and Russia because this yes, affects tourism as well. We thought that with the pandemic coming to the stage of containment, the tourism industry would witness a boom. Now with the current challenge that has been presented in uh, Eastern Europe, <coughs> it's another challenge. And this definitely is affecting the Middle East, namely the countries that rely on tourism uh, as a, a big chunk of their uh, GDP. What would be the significance of Egypt chairing the 48th session and what would be its priority? First of all, we have to understand that uh, Egypt has been a member state uh, in the World Tourism Organization for a very long time and it's uh, like any other members, uh, sharing a commission means that hosting its uh, uh, activities together coordinating with the, with the uh, World Tourism Organization in order to, to uh, have a special event where they are going to discuss uh, uh, specific topics. These topics could be uh, the ones related. It's like coordination. So basically, when a country is, is sharing a commission, it's like coordinating with the mother association in order to put out the topics and, and coordinating with these delegations who are coming to attend the event. Um, in, in one or two years time, there will be another country sharing uh, the commission as well. And also they will bring out their agenda uh, onto the table. It gives us power in order to insert whatever we want to put in the agenda together with the collaboration of the World Organization, uh, World Tourism Organization, because w as much as tourism is very important for the rest of the world, it's very important for Egypt as well. It's contributing to uh, nearly 12% of the GDP in Egypt. And actually, what we don't know is that tourism is responsible, worldwide tourism is responsible today for 10% of the global GDP, mm -hmm. which is a huge amount of money. And you're talking about uh, uh, between 3.4 billion to about 5 uh, trillion US dollars. Um, one of the things also that we, would, we need to know how important the tourism industry for the world is that one of every person living on this planet is, of every 10 persons living on this planet is actually working in the tourism industry. You can imagine that. Working and it in, affects and, other industries and, as and well. And it affects every other industry. So uh, the fact that the pandemic uh, have been hitting the tourism industry worldwide so hard and slowing its growth, it, 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 it's, it's one of these topics that had to be discussed to discuss different uh, scenarios of recovery. Uh, World uh, Tourism Organization have put three different scenarios of recovery. One that was a very optimistic scenario, which is 2022, which is supposed to be by the end of this year, and now it's not happening. It did happen at some point when we started to get like a weaker variant and countries started to ease up their restrictions. But then, uh, as we go along, no one expected Russia and Ukraine conflict to come to, no one expected the um, uh, supply chain uh, uh, crisis that is happening nowadays, which is affecting the economy. And as a business insider program, you've been discussing this for the last few weeks, we are on a verge of flaring prices everywhere around the world. It's, it's affecting fuel prices, it's affecting flights, it's affecting uh, transportation between different countries around the world. It's also it's affecting ability of travel to spend more money in, in the exploring new destinations. So, so right now people are um, uh, being hauled again. Uh, it's not, not because of the pandemic this time, but because of the international uh, crisis that is happening. Sanctions have been imposed on, on, on Russia and uh, have been affecting the rest of uh, the world today. It's affecting us, it's affecting everyone. This is like we got in the middle of a fight which is not ours, but it's one of these things of a global system, economical system, which one thing that happens, we call it the, uh, the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect is something so small that happens somewhere, it affects you in a different area at some point. Because we're all interconnected, all of us interconnected, we became 
very much uh, like in a global village. Everything happens in there, affects the rest. What you said basically made, that's what made me stop and, and look at the title of the conference again. Tourism awareness and human capacity building, that's fine. Towards a sustainable tourism society. Yes. Can we look at the tourism industry and say it can be sustainable? How can it be sustainable when the butterfly effect is predominant in this industry? Well, sustainability in tourism basically uh, is, is somehow separated from uh, current events. means that when there is a liquid situation at some point and it's affecting uh, many other industries, affecting um, whether a tourism industry or affecting economy or affecting uh, other aspects of the economy nowadays, it's actually because uh, the, it wasn't expected. It was something that's not in the scenario. What the we black meant, swan. Uh, what we meant by, by sustainability is that to produce or put out a product, an in, um, a touristic product that, that can support, help communities, societies to grow and benefit out of that and at the same time maintain the environment and be sustainable for generations to come. So it is type of tourism that is not destroying economies, that is not destroying societies, but actually helping them to help themselves. This is, this is the hard core of sustainability, is that we want an industry that is maintaining growth of local societies, helping out local societies more than it's helping governments, more than it's helping uh, uh, um, um, uh, investors. Is this achievable? We, it is in many countries. How is it, it is. Uh, when this is why countries just, are reaching just, out to sustainable. Let me just, uh, uh, stop you here because what, what you're saying makes sense. It makes sense in normal situations. However, the tourism industry is so much affected by any development that happens. The term itself, sustainable does not apply when it comes to this industry because basically after uh, uh, the containment of the pandemic you started to see uh, a breather within the industry. People are starting to operate again no normally and then all of a sudden this happens so you're drawn back again. If you have a society that is founded on tourism then this society is susceptible to these factors all the time. So how can you achieve sustainability there? Whatever affects the tourism industry doesn't kill it. Hmm. It actually makes it stronger. It makes it much stronger <laughs> because at some point people never stop traveling. Hmm. People never stop moving around. Right. This is not the last 200 years. It's not with the invention of fair planes. It's through history. Mm -hmm. Through thousands of years, people are moving around. This is the beginning of tourism. So when tourism evolved to the status where it is today, it had been affected by some global crisis, such as wars, conflicts in different areas, terrorism that also have affected uh, the tourism industry, but it is still growing in a higher pace. Um, what affects one area sometimes doesn't affect the rest of the areas. It means the tourism is thriving in many areas around the world. When you have one specific area affected by conflict and war, many other areas are thriving and getting, getting the same exact same market share. Um, uh, how to be sustainable, how to produce a sustainable product and sustainable flow of travelers to a specific destination is that you have to meet a certain criteria. This criteria is meeting right expectation, presenting the right experience to travelers, making travelers as repeaters to come back to your destination again because you created the, the, the overall excellent experience that they are expecting 
and also benefiting local communities so local communities can give you back that support for tourism industry and also benefiting uh, stakeholders who are able to invest and inject more money into your tourism industry to keep it to keep it uh, alive you know in the time of uh, pandemics or crisis what i mean here is that is that everyone has to be involved maintaining environmental uh, uh, issues and 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 keeping green cities and and attracting more travelers to areas people are running away from mass tourism these days and they go into into adventure tourism they go into cultural tourism they go into learning and discoveries and people are engaging more with local communities separating your travelers or you from experience of engaging with local communities engaging into markets and and benefiting local locals from the the mass tourism that you are getting is 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 like you're killing a tourism and a destination if you if you separate them but you need to have people engaged you need to keep them uh, 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 involved into the tourism industry so you can get their support in time of crisis uh, pandemic like this people know it's heading everywhere around the world and it's and the only way is just to wait get the right opportunity you know, uh, this is why countries have uh, have eased up the restrictions. This is why countries have opened up again, because, as I told you, tourism is constituting 10% of the global GDP. That's a huge amount of, of income for many countries. And in, in, in our case here, we, we have 12 to 13% of our GDP comes out from the uh, uh, tourism industry. Yes, we have been hurt hard. Okay, but it's a time for a revival. It's a time for 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 uh, um, uh, the industry to to rise up again. We have three scenarios, as I told you, have been put out by the World Tourism Organization for the recovery from this uh, pandemic. And uh, the first one was the 2022, which is by the end of 2022 is the quick recovery scenario. The second scenario was uh, 2024, which is a less optimistic scenario, uh, which says that maybe the pandemic with its variations may continue up to 2023, and then 2024 is going to be the recovery. And then the most pessimistic scenario was 2026 scenario. I think where we are going right now is going to be the scenario of 2024, is, 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 is the full 100% recovery. We used to get a number of travelers all over the world, 1.4 billion travelers worldwide the number dropped nearly 6 70 percent you know because of the pandemic and in order to recover that number one more time and 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 regain this confidence and, and get the same capacity you know and and re-employing the thousands of people millions of people have left their jobs because of the pandemic is going to take time you know rehabilitating people again in order to to get back and get involved in the tourism industry getting communities to get engaged and um, encouraging people for sustainable tourism this and is reviving all major economies hot issues and reviving economies all so of these are hot issues thriving again all of them hot issues on the table that these commissions are dis discussing these days. So when you have a situation whereby you have the three scenarios, 2022, 24, 26, definitely the right way to approach the situation is to uh, start preparing for the return to normalcy. What would you say uh, is Egypt's current strategy in dealing with this uh, tourism industry and what needs to be done in the coming stage? I think the way how we went through the pandemic and the way how we handle things without having a full closure and uh, the, the very restrictive measures and at the same time dealing with the pandemic as it's uh, and giving it the right, the right uh, size and, 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 and in terms of its reality has been extremely realistic. And this is why when we reopen again for tourism, we have not really restricted movement into Egypt. And we put the right rules by maintaining the same health regulations as per the, the uh, World Health Organization, but at the same time, open up our touristic sites to travelers to come in, especially on the Red Sea destinations. I think the policy that uh, we have uh, decided to adopt 
has been a very wise policy. Uh, it, it's not based on, on, on panic, but based on understanding of the situation. I think that has been a major understanding by a no, number of countries. In the very beginning, uh, countries were um, so, you know, uh, I would say hesitant of reopening for tourism, but now as they have seen uh, the result of the impact on our economy and other neighboring countries which have eased up the restrictions, I think they have started to realize now that Egypt deserves that, deserve this kind of touristic flow. This is why lately many European countries have lifted restrictions of traveling to Egypt, um, including you know, uh, many countries in Europe, uh, Germany and Italy and many other countries. I think we are in a verge of getting back the touristic flow uh, one more time. I think we did a successful uh, strategy or follow the successful strategy uh, in dealing with this pandemic. I think we are moving in the right direction, trying to regain our market share. Um, I think Minister of Tourism and the Cabinet and uh, the Prime Minister are, are um, adopting um, sustainability and support and development for tourism. Um, putting it on top of the agenda as a source of a foreign currency into uh, the economy. I think we are in a verge of witnessing a, a, a full revival uh, phase of the tourism industry in Egypt because of the uh, very moderate policy and strategy that we have taken for the last year and a half. Amid an international crisis, I think we have succeeded. We came out of it, as you can see. We are the only country in the region that doesn't have a, um, that their development is going with plus, not with minus. Mm -hmm. Many countries have done, have gone down, um, you know, uh, the indicator. And I think we are, uh, we should be proud of this. And I think uh, uh, all what we need to do is just to deal with the current situation again with the same strategy. And, uh, and try to prepare for it for mm -hmm. with, with, with the kind of strategies. I think we need to refine our international uh, marketing plan in, in order to, to, to reach out to new markets, uh, in order to find a substitute for the, for the Russian and the Ukrainian markets at this moment, because I don't think those two countries are gonna uh, come out of this uh, so easy and, and people are not gonna resume traveling back to our destination again, so we'll have a shortage. I think we should be looking for um, alternative destinations. I think we should be studying these destinations, find out the right target market, and find out where where we can uh, 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 bring that flow from uh, from other destinations that may show interest in in uh, Egypt one more time. All right. So you mentioned marketing. One of the things, um, capacity building and awareness. This is one of the major themes of the uh, uh, Commission's um, conference uh, due to be held on the 28th. So capacity building and awareness is very important for societies to flourish when dealing with the tourism industry. Uh, how is the organization contributing in this regard or is it uh, uh, an effort by the Commission to adopt an awareness strategy and the capacity building strategy. Commissions normally when they do conferences and uh, adopt a specific strategy uh, for member states is to mandate to these member states is to spread that kind of awareness or to um, uh, you know maintain sustainable tourism or whatever the topics that they're discuss discussing. Mm -hmm. So in this regard the 48th meeting uh, what is discussing the, the uh, adoption of sustainable tourism, awareness and human capacity is very important at this stage. Why? Because at this stage we need to remind people one more time how important tourism is uh, to their societies. We need to remind people how one more time that tourism how? is... Spreading awareness is done through many ways. Spreading awareness, uh, linking... Um, uh, um, but for us, it's not so a matter of spreading social, awareness, it's social, a matter of embedding it in the educational so system. Social development for any country uh, comes from the fact that people are aware what is actually helping them out to grow, what, what is enhancing their life. Um, we need to tell our people, or maybe perhaps as you said, injecting in our education and curriculum, 
we need to tell them that this is a very vital industry that we need to take care of it. This is the reason why the World Tourism Organization is pushing member states in order to adapt sustainable tourism policies. Because without adapting sustainable tourism policies, local societies, you local, the local average person would not feel the importance of tourism, would not feel how tourism is impacting his own life. Tourism industry itself injecting uh, uh, revenue into 40 other industries indirectly and it's the only industry in the world today that is actually um, as an intangible services that you you see in the tourism industry is aff nearly affecting every other industry everything that is connected to the tourism industry from supply chain from uh, from economy from trade from uh, industry so basically it's all sustainability is from down that upwards we need Mr. to promote Adam that Khalifa, the among the marketing expert thank you of international tourism and digital transformation tourism industry thank you very much for your insight and for your mm -hmm. contribution a pleasure you. having you on the show All here the tonight thanks for watching i'm ayman salah see you again same time next week good night